I never know how to start these, so I guess I'll just get on with it. Cytotec is a medication that is often used to induce labors, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the benefits and risks associated with it. In theory, your care provider is supposed to provide you with all this information, but quite honestly, and this is at no fault of them, they a lot of times don't have the time to go through every aspect of it. So they usually tell you that it's generally safe, they'll provide you with the basic risks, and it's up to you to decide if you want to use it. But unfortunately, that means that you may not have all of the information that you need to make the decision that's best for you. So because of that, I wanted to actually dive a little bit deeper and really explore some of the research that's out there, general opinions, things like that. Cytotec's use during labors is technically off-label, meaning that the medication wasn't made to be used like that, but it's a very popular drug um, across the world. A major reason why is because it is uh, cheap and it has stable temperatures, and so it's easy to transport and keep in places that might not have, you know, some of the technologies that's needed for other medications. But one of the downsides of its off-label use is that there's just not a lot of studies as far as proving that the medication is unsafe used in this capacity. What that means is generally a medication is perceived as safe um, unless it's been proven otherwise in the case of like side attack. So they deemed it safe for use for the gastro problems. They saw that it created uterine contractions and started using it for that purpose. And there has been no research out there that has really proven that it's not safe or effective. One of the things that Cytotec also has going for it is it, it actually is an effective drug. Um, compared to other drugs used to soften the cervix, because that's what Cytotec is made for. It's supposed to soften the cervix and make it more ripe. Compared to other drugs, it does have a better success rate. And even with that said, some care providers don't use it because of its off-label use, and they uh, naturally go to the alternative or the comparable medication. So if you are curious about what your doctor uses, you should ask them what they tend to use if your cervix needs to be ripened. There are a few different methods of delivery of the medication. It can be buckle like in the mouth, it can be an oral solution, or it can be inserted vaginally as a gel or like on a tampon. I'll kind of get into the differences, um, like the differences as far as what's more effective based on the delivery method in a second, but I wanted to just talk really quickly about the overall risks associated with the medication. On the actual label for the medication, the insert lists the following risks. So it can cause hyperstimulation in the uterus. It can cause like contractions that are super long, that are problematic, that um, stop the blood flow to your uterus or your placenta. It can cause uterine rupture. It can also cause amniotic fluid embolism, pelvic pain, bleeding, fetal distress, and death in both baby and mom. Now, some of the more severe risks are not very common, but it has been documented and it should be taken in consideration. To kind of put into perspective, there has been at least six cases that I found of uterine rupture as a direct result to this medication, primarily due to a vaginal insertion of the medication, but it is a higher risk in all of the med like all of the medication presents that higher risk. Other possible risks that are associated with this is meconium staining of the fluids and C-section due to just the um, hyperstimulation of the uterus. And also those that have low Bishop scores. And the Bishop score is a total assessment on how likely a successful uh, induction is going to be. The lower the Bishop score, the less likely an induction success. So the fact that it does help women have vaginal deliveries, especially in situations where inductions are medically needed, is a really good plus for the medication. And there's no denying that there is a benefit to using it. The issues come up with regards to having a good understanding of how the delivery method, whether it be oral or vaginally, um, compares with other medications and also what dosage it's going to be given at. 
The general guidelines for the dosage is 25 mil micrograms, I think is that what it is, micrograms, um, every four hours if it's inserted vaginally or orally 50 micrograms every four hours uh, for, up to four, um, for up to 200 micrograms. What that means typically is if you're taking it orally at, micro, at 50 micrograms, then it would be about four doses over the course of 16 hours. And if it's done vaginally, you have uh, the option of having more dosages over a longer period of time. The higher the dose, the quicker the labor, but also the increased risk of having issues. Cytotec is also used to prevent postpartum hemorrhage, and so that's another use that it may be used for. Now, contraindications to the medication, which means when under what circumstances the medication should not be used is if you have a history of previous C-section and also if you've had uh, lots of pregnancies. The uh, fact that it can cause hyperstimulation to the uterus and the fact that a C-section causes a weakening in the uterine wall makes it like a recipe for disaster in lots of cases. But it's been shown that even without a previous C-section, this medication can cause uterine rupture. Another thing of note is the fact that babies tend to have a lower APGAR score, and that's across the board depend regardless of the delivery method. Oral administration of Cytotec tends to have less instances of low APGAR scores. But I mean, when we're dealing with an 88% um, low APGAR score when it comes to babies, that is pretty problematic. And if I didn't mention already, the APGAR score is used to assess the baby immediately after birth. So a low score means that baby's not doing as well. The APGAR scores are taken at one, five, and seven minutes. So a baby that's not doing as well in five minutes will be rechecked and that um, can improve. And it usually does. There doesn't seem to be an increased risk of C-section for this medication compared to other prostaglandin medications, or even like Pitocin. But its use can reduce the amount of Pitocin needed uh, at a later time, meaning it softens the cervix and the body can take over and initiate labor on its own, or the amount of Pitocin needed to augment labor may be reduced because, you know, some of the ripening has already happened and your body doesn't have to work. It doesn't need that much medication to get to the same outcome. Compared to oxytocin, um, Cytotex use often results in shorter labors, which is, like I said, a good thing, often seen as a good thing by doctors uh, with its use. Anytime we're introducing medication to a laboring uh, mom's body, we wanna make sure that the medication is safe for breastfeeding since hopefully baby is going to at least attempt to breastfeed immediately after birth. And according to the information that I have, there doesn't seem to be any uh, indication that it is safe, but there's no in information that shows that it's unsafe. The idea is that it is, has a very, uh, it's very rapidly metabolized, which is good. But as far as if it's safe for breastfeeding or not, there doesn't seem to be any evidence one way or another. So the three ways that it is typically administered is either in the buckle pad, so like in the cheek, orally or vaginally. Although I would say that the two most common ways are either vaginally or orally. When I first went through doula training, you know, there was a lot of information given to me that, you know, the vaginally inserted uh, Cytotec is better because it can be removed if there's any problems. And the fact that it can be removed because it's on a tampon does seem to be true, but the studies that I've seen and the Cochrane Review does not suggest that, that is, the vaginally delivered method is actually more safe. They have similar success rates, but the oral solution t tends to be tolerated better. For example, the vaginal insert is associated with a higher risk of, uh, or a higher incidence of meconium staining fetal acidosis, and an increased risk of chorion... chorioamnionitis. Pretty much, I may not know how to say that, but pretty much what that means is they have a higher rate of having, you know, um, a 
infection over their chorion. And fetal acidosis means that they have a high amount of acid in their blood. Naturally, because of the severity of the risks, it's important that you are monitored on it and that um, the dose is carefully calculated by the doctor. Again, the one of the complaints that I originally heard was that the oral dose, because it comes in a pill form, it has to be cut because it's not made for the dosages that it's needed for induction. Um, it can be off and the less accurate the dosage calculation means that uh, a person may be getting more than is uh, recommended over the course of the treatment. So my kid decided to join me for the rest of the video, so now it's gonna be the two of us finishing this up. As far as alternatives, you have a few options. Dinoprostone, which is called Cervidil, is probably the most commonly alternative used, like the alternatively used medication. In fact, I think, like I mentioned before in the video, uh, the majority of doctors probably are going to go to that first as an option. But other options that you have include Foley bulb, Foley bulb with oxytocin, and a hormone called, let me double check for you, Myfeprostone. It's also known as um, Callum? Corlim. Um, so I don't know wherever you're at watching this what your doctor knows that as, but it's a hormone medication and um, it's been shown to be equally effective at ripening the cervix. Now the one thing to mention about that, and I'll cover all of the other medications kind of in similar fashion, the risks, the benefits, things like that, um, is that supposedly the um, supposedly it takes more medication if the medication mifoprostone does not work alone at ripening the cervix. So in most cases it will be as effective, but in the cases that it's not, more medication may need to be administered to start labor. So anyways, as far as labor induction or augmentation, it seems like um, Cytotec is a option. And, you know, understanding that in general, this extreme risks are low, but that there are risks associated with that medication um, is important to know. I hope you found this video helpful and uh, hopefully I upload more videos that are uh, equally as helpful.